Greetings and welcome to Revna Den. I'm Michael Hassenfang, and this is episode 11, Days of Elijah, the Three. I'm going to go into this topic about how we are in the Days of Elijah, but also in the next episode, episode 12, the Days of Noah, how we're there. And also, I haven't made this a topic, but I'll probably run it through either in this episode or next episode, probably in the Noah one, and how we're also in the Days of Joel. And if you look at the Bible, it seems that they're giving a rundown of everything that has happened in the past and everything that is going to happen because there's nothing new under the sun. History repeats itself, but it seems that we're getting into this uh, time where all these different prophecies, all these different stories and like past histories are sort of being thrown together into one giant end time scenario. And though as Manuel Johnson said when Christ told him, we are in the end times, but not the end of time. This seems to be how the enemy is pushing forward their agenda. It's almost as if they want the tribulation to happen sooner. They want their time on earth to happen quicker. And I think there's a few things behind that. But one of the reasons is, is one, because they know they lost and they just want to take as many people with them as they possibly can. And so they want to push this agenda further ahead so that less people are saved less people come to Christ and their agenda is put into motion and they have their time on earth. But I think in order uh, for that to happen, they, they fail to realize that them doing this, they are actually going to push more people to Christ, not away. Their agenda is not going to happen because it's not within God's time frame. He's going to stop it. We're seeing this manifest in our time right now in like live action, you know, in, in, in real time. And I think more people are waking up to it. Um, <clears throat> again, since the devil deceives himself, he is the father of lies and deceives everyone else who follows him. They're just so blatantly um, just within themselves that they don't see their loss, at least the people on this realm. I don't know how any other demonic entities may see it. I think, this, I think Satan knows he's lost. How many of his followers actually realize that? Or just follow him, you know, carte blanche, regardless. Um, <clears throat> they're going to keep pushing this agenda forward, not realizing that they're going to be snapping into their own trap. But we've seen a progression about, I'd say, through the last maybe 50 years. Uh, it goes back farther in this nation, but we really saw it back in the early 60s to the 70s of this starting agenda that they're having. And I think it ties in well to the days of Elijah and what's known as the three. Jonathan Kahn talks about this in one of his books. Mark Driscoll goes about this in his sermon on uh, New Days, Old Demons. Um, Mike Thompson speaks about this, of the different, the three types in our society that are trying to bring down our nation. And I'm gonna recommend him as the prophet of the week, because I did try to do my research. And I did try to find Thompson's um, notes on this, like his segments and his uh, lectures and uh, speeches that he gives on, on this particular topic, and I couldn't find it. So I have an agenda for you, which is to go to his link that I'm going to recommend today and search it out yourself, see if you can find it, <clears throat> see if it ties into Jonathan Kahn, see if it ties into Mark Driscoll, see if it ties into what I'm saying, seeing if it ties into what other prophets are trying to bring up these days, and you'll see that there's there's this there's a substance there of what's happening and it's it's all being tied in. And I'm just gonna roughly go through that today on who the three are now in Ezekiel. This prophet, he just comes out of the woodwork. Um, he comes from a town so small you can't even find it on the map. Uh, nobody really knows his history, though some think that maybe his father or grandfather, like his, you know, his, his ancestors were prophets because they were being killed at the time and he just comes out of the woodwork. Uh, probably not so much, I would say, as maybe a vengeance, but a calling from the Lord to go and smite out this triple three, <laughs> this, this triple decker of demonic entities that seem to have this continual play in motion throughout all of history, and we even see it today. And if you don't recognize the things that I'm about to say, that happened back there in relation to today. I, you've just got the wool over your eyes or something. So I'm not not sure how else to, to bring it about. But he goes in. He uh, does his performance against, you know, the prophets of Baal and stuff. And 
the three that I'm going to bring up right now uh, in relation to today and how we can view it in relation to the days of Elijah and, and see this pattern is the first one is Baal. Now, in those days, they actually had Baal worshippers uh, or Baalim worship, uh, which means that there may be more than one. Uh, some people and theologians say that Baal is actually tied to Beelzebub. It's just a different name for him. Like instead of how we pronounce it, Beelzebub would be Baalzebub or Baal. Um, and that's also in reference to who Satan is. And Baal comes in and is worshipped and uh, symbolized as a bull, which we see even today in our society with everything in line with the bull. Like, for instance, in New York City, they, they have the statue of the bull right outside of the stock market. And that's why it's called a bull market. It's, it's technically in relation to the worldly Babylonian system of Baal. Baal market, bull market. So... Just a different way to phrase it. <clears throat> and Baal comes in originally to bring in question and doubt and a change to our society. It's more or less the hath God said, and it gets people to think a little bit more like, oh, well, is there really a God? Should, do we really need to follow his ways? Here's this system which is going to be put in the place, which is the bull market, which is a Babylonian system, which we are all under in captivity in one way or another. Now, there's some people who try and play the stock markets and stuff like that. And I'm not saying, you know, it's it's a bad thing to do it. Um, <clears throat> but within the system, you need to be aware to what God is telling you to do, to where he is showing you, you know, what things to put into so that you can increase your wealth and your prosperity to give to the kingdom of God. Um, some people may think that that's prosperity gospel. I don't. I think God wants us to be prosperous. He wants us to have money. We can't be spreading wealth in the kingdom of God and bringing joy and happiness to others and building up his kingdom and helping those in need if we're all just groveling in the mud and just poor and just struggling paycheck to paycheck. That's not God's system. That is the world Babylonian system that is trying to keep you enslaved. And part of this is the ball worship of this system, which even the people of Egypt were under. That's why when they went to Mount Sinai and Moses was up on the mountain getting the Ten Commandments, they were down trying to recreate the bull, the, the, the calf, and put him, you know, in gold as a statue to worship there um, as a means to bring themselves back into that worldly system. You know, in Egypt, we at least ate this food. You know, we have these foods. We ensure we were under enslavement, you know. Uh, the thing is with the Egyptians is they knew they were under enslavement. You know, they, they knew that they were slaves, um, but they still wanted it because at least they had the comfort of, we had a pillow to sleep on. We, we had food to eat. They know that they gave us these certain things, but God wanted to take them out of that system and put them into his system, which was going to be way better. But in order to do that, they had to remove Egypt from their lives and, and they just couldn't push it out. They always wanted to return back to it. And God was showing them a new way. Again, as I was saying with the Egyptians, they at least knew that they were enslaved. It seems a lot of people today aren't even aware that they're within this old Babylonian bull, bull market worshiping system. And and it's they just think that this is the way life has always been. This is the way God intended it to be. This is how we need to make our finances. This is the way we need to live our lives. Just struggling, groveling in the dirt, you know, living paycheck to paycheck, just getting by with a measly amount and then giving as much as we can to donations and charity and tithe, which I mean, I'm not complaining, but my biggest bill that I have monthly is my tithe. Like 10% is of what I make to supply this family for is like a lot of money that I'm giving away. And then I give donations and charity on top of that or try and help out the church with certain things or if they need, you know, certain money, if they have like potlucks and stuff, we, Liz and I try to supply with certain food or, we, you know, we try, I mean, we try and help out those ways as well too. But just trying to help out with the kingdom of God is a like, I mean, it is a groveling struggle to try and do that. But God doesn't want us that way. He wants us prosperous where we can just give freely. Do not, you know, let your one hand know what the other hand is doing. You just, you, you do it freely. You do it happily. Um, and I, I still do it. I try, I try to do it happily, even though I know it's going to really hurt. 
But God wants us out of that system. He wants us to have the finances so we can increase his kingdom and everyone be happy and hopefully not have anyone poor. Once this flip comes with the tables and the evil elite lose all their finances and the trillions upon trillions or quadrillions, I don't even know what's after trillions, um, <clears throat> come flying in to the kingdom of God, um, his believers that are using it as kingdom financiers, I think you're going to see a total change of this world and this, this Babylonian system just turn to ash and we will raise up a new kingdom, which is going to be absolutely amazing during that time, new discoveries, new inventions, uh, new healings, new ways of travel, all the stuff that I think is even there right now, but has been hindered, has been hidden from us that we can't see because of this Babylonian system, because they don't want us understanding any of this or having any of it. They, they want us either enslaved or dead. So ball worship is this ball, ball worship is giving everything that you have to this Babylonian system to believe that he is, uh, the almighty dollar is your actual, you know, worth in this world. Um, and it also brings in question that, well, if this is our system and this is the way it's supposed to be, and this is the way we're supposed to work and all day, is there really such a thing as God? Um, you know, it, why not just give into the lines of hedonism? If it feels good, do it. This is what we're saving up for, just to scrape by and, and just have the fun that we want or, you know, live paycheck to paycheck and go out to the bars and, you know, get completely drunk because that's that's all we have in life is just to, just to drink and be merry or drink to get your, you know, sorrows away, one of the two. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> and from that ball worship, they start bringing in, other lewdness which is the second person uh which is the enchantress and she was known as Ashtara um or ishtar uh aphrodite's venus she was the one that jezebel pretty much you know her her whole her whole being was encompassed by this enchantress and she brings in the lewdness of the hedonism to the Babylonian system, where if it feels good, do it. Might as well, because there's no God, you know, we're, we're questioning, and this is a system we're under. Well, if this is a system we're under, and this is all that we have in life, why not just do what we want? So we bring in the sexuality and the perversion. And those who worshipped under Ishtara, or this enchantress, just like Jezebel, she would have a whole barrage of her own priests, which were men dressed as women just to give you an idea of where we're going in this day and age. Bunch of people, bunch of guys who were confused about their own gender or they became eunuchs and they, you know, they just adorned themselves as females and worshiped her and her um, ties to just sexual freedom and sexuality and perverseness. And if you look at things like the pride flag and uh, what that stands for with the colors and this new adaptation to it the one where it comes in from the side and it has the you know the the pink and the light blue and the white and the black and brown um i i heard barry wunch talk about this where he uh, had a friend mention to him that those colors are not what you think those colors are you know oh the the white pink and the blue is for transgenderism it's like, no 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 supposedly and hidden even from the gay agenda the pink and the blue symbolizes little boys and little girls so we got pedophilia and if i'm not mistaken i believe now i could be wrong on this and if someone wants to requote me they can but i believe the white alone means uh either transgenderism or the uh purity of youth where they would want to corrupt that I i'm not sure which of one of the twos it was but uh and then the brown is not for brown people, it's for bestiality. And the black is not for black people, it's for necrophilia. So uh, from what I've heard, that's the hidden meaning behind that flag. And then of course the, the rainbow has all their uh, diverse meanings, which I won't get into right now. Mark Driscoll does. I would recommend watching his, uh, not New Day's Old Demons, I think it's called Black and White in a Colorful World, or is it? Yeah, I think it's called Black and White in a Colorful World. 
I, I believe that was his topic. And he goes into that about the, the rainbows and those specific colors. Uh, but I just wanted to bring up those extra colors just to show you how perverse and deranged these things are. If that's true, if, if you know, and they're hiding behind the transgender colors to say, oh, no, no, it means this when it actually means, no, this is what it really means. Um, <clears throat> just how deceptive they are even to their own people of what these colors truly mean. And, uh, and just how demonic it is uh <clears throat> but anyways running sorry going off on that side you know, sidetrack there but uh those colors are pretty much represented uh as just the sexual lewdness and perversion and the sexual freedom that we see with this enchantress and how we see with the lgbt agenda today i was going to go on a qia plus or whatever it's called that's just the lgb um agenda that they have and what they're trying to push and it's like once you're in that bull market and you're in that babylonian system and you start to question the way of life and how you're supposed to be doing life and then realize well if there is no such thing as god you know or e even if there is a god he's obviously just letting us do what we want so why not just have pure he hedonism get drunk all the time do drugs and just sleep with whoever you want and that's the second person with the enchantress that's bringing in this uh, sexualized agenda. We're just free sex to everyone. Uh, there is no such thing as, I don't even want to say the nuclear family. I just want to say family, you know, <laughs> husband, wife, kids, you know, people are, oh, that's a nuclear family. It's like, no, no, it's, it's, it's family. And I get the idea of like the nuclear one where you, it's not the uh, old Victorian era where you had multi-generational housing and, you know, you had the grandparents and the great grandparents and, you know, the, the parents and the children all living in this single mansion and stuff like that. OK, I, I get it. But you don't have to say nuclear family. You just say family. It's, it's the destruction of family, regardless of how many within the generations live within your household. It's still the destruction of it. And they're trying to rearrange the roles of men and women or in, just remove them all together and let the children be their own selves, you know, uh, totally void of any sort of moral compass or parental upbringing. And they're trying to sexualize them. I mean, look at all these things that you see today with all the, the drag, crew, drag queen story hour and uh, that the trans parades that they have going on with little kids watching them dance and twerk around. I mean, it's just, could you imagine if something like that went down in the 50s? And I'm sure it did, but I mean, openly as it does now, just like right there in your face, man, that building would have been burnt to ash. And <clears throat> there's been so much leniency given since 1963 when we took prayer out of schools, we removed the Bible from schools. We added in uh, the evolution theory uh, through, and I think it jumped from like, I think it was like 3,000 words up to like 10,000 or something like that in, in the school curriculum in 63. Uh, we brought in more openness to sexual desire, sexual perversions. Um, and, and it's just, we've seen a, a skyrocket now oh, here this way. So we've seen a skyrocket of uh, just this agenda kicking off. And which brings to the third one, which is Moloch. He's called the destroyer. He's the third part of this, where if this is the way life is and there is no God and it's free reign for all, including uh, sexuality, and there's no repercussions to sin. Now we can just literally destroy everything else on the planet, which is including our unborn and babies and this is where Moloch comes into play where he destroys everything and everything needs to pass through him including abortion the destruction of infants was a gift given up to Moloch back in those days and we see this today with um, just the whole abortion agenda we seem to have won that slightly with the overturning of Roe v Wade and I think that was the tipping point of what we're seeing today of how the evil is now turning to good uh, though the darkness will push back on that. But the agenda of abortion is what supplied this evil to just perpetuate in this nation over and over and over. It was, a, it was a sense of that. It was the, the using of the adrenochrome from children for the global elite, because it gives them their, I don't know, power kick youth kick. I don't even know what adrenochrome does for them, uh, apart from just doing it for pure Luciferian reasons. But that is a thing. 
I mean, regardless of what people may think, I mean, they do use adrenochrome. That's that's an actual, there is a market for it out there, just as much as there is a market for child trafficking and using them for uh, sexual activities. It's it's pretty, pretty disgusting. And then, of course, once you're done with the kid, you dump them in the trash, pretty much. So that's another form of the Moloch worship. And we see that in the nation today because Moloch is represented by the owl. Uh, and in our government, if you look at a map of Washington, D.C. from, you know, satellite, like bird's eye view, and you're looking down, you'll see that the Capitol um, rests, or is it the White House? Sorry, I think it's the White House, rests directly in the belly of an owl. Like, it's shaped like an owl, and that's supposed to be representative of Moloch. And D.C. was not a place that the Lord wanted uh, as his capital. I believe he still wanted it as Philadelphia. I know it was in New York for a while, but I, I believe from what I hear is the, from the prophets is that he wanted to move to Philadelphia and have it there <clears throat> and to totally drain the swamp per se of all this evil and vileness. And once the tables have flipped and the exposure, the corruption is exposed and we see all this evil for what it truly is, especially in politics in our nation uh, with, within the government, we will see all the evil that has been done underneath the Capitol building, underneath the White House, and in, in these dark chambers where they hide away, we'll, we'll get a to totally complete view of what is going down. And I, hopefully that will really wake some people up. I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee because I haven't since I started. So. I think the destroyer comes not so much as strong men, um, but weak men. Uh, the ones who are being whipped by this lewd enchantress uh, that has power over them. Like, they do what she says, and it's a total flip of what it should be. It should be God. And not to say man has authority over woman but when it comes to a husband and wife there needs to be a headship within that household and the man has the headship and the wife is supposed to be obedient to the decisions of the house but that doesn't mean that she's subservient to him and he gets to beat her and all this stuff we've I, i'm surprised at how many people actually think that nonsense um woman came from man but she came from his side and so she's not ahead of him you know which means that he's whipped and she's not behind him which shows this uh toxic masculinity chauvinistic kind of like you know i'm I, i'm in charge and you're just my trophy wife or servant but she's to the side of him they're supposed to be in unison working together as husband and wife he's leading the way she's the helper to help him so that they can progress together and move on into this family unit and they're calling into god but when it comes down to certain things within the family household there is a certain headship which needs to be done because there's two heads you're unified into one body but that one body needs to be in agreement on one thing and the final call goes to the husband that's what it means to be submissive to him it doesn't it doesn't it's not talking about he gets to do whatever he wants to you because in the next verse it says husbands loves your wife love your wife as christ loves the church so obviously you know it's saying wives be obedient you know and submissive to, to your husbands obviously in, in the callings of what we're supposed to be doing within your family life and then calling to the lord but husbands you're also supposed to love your wives and be in agreement with them as well too and have them at your side not behind you or ahead of you and with Ahab and Jezebel, you had Baal at the top, not God. So they were worshiping him. But instead of the man, it was the wife, the enchantress, who was the next in line. She made the decision. She made the call. And even though she may have gave incentives or words of encouragement to Ahab on what he is supposed to do, it seems she was the one calling the shots. And so you had the submissive Ahab at the bottom who was letting the wife be the head of the household and he was pretty much destroying the land because of it because of his own needs his own wants and using her uh as pretty much how he wanted to get his way since she had all the power to do so and we kind of see that today ever so slightly 
in certain family units and uh, just in in today's world just as as a common factor you, you look at a lot of tv shows <clears throat> where the man comes off as the idiot you know like homer simpson men are nothing but homer simpsons and you, you you can't get away from it you just can't get away from it all the women empowerment which is not empowerment at all uh shows like disney um and pretty much every TV station that's out there, just uplifting the women, making them the strong ones, making them the ones in charge, making I have woman power and I'm going to go off and do it. And the men are just blatantly just dumb, idiotic, wimpy, weak-willed, stupid, just pieces of trash. And it's almost like you can't get away from that in today's culture. And it seems that it is promoting this Jezebelian style of life and the Ahabs that are pretty much, um, I'm trying not to say it in a bad way, I wanted to say P-whipped, if, if you know what I mean, um, th that are just doormats for these people. And they're worshiping the wrong God completely uh, into this Babylonian world system. And if you can't see that today, man, I don't know what to tell you, but... What we need to do, I feel, is to come into the Lord, lean into him. Uh, we need to have men again. And you know what? Uh, I know I'm kind of pushing hard on the men today. They, they need to step up. They need to be men. They, they need to find God. They need to know who the true God is of this world. They need to fall into alignment with him. They need to start worshiping him. But you know what? We also need women today too i'm just going to come out and say that you know it's like oh you mean women empowerment no no i mean the opposite of that we actually need women as well today we need them in their to to, to play their part i was going to say they need to be in their place and then someone will misunderstand me and get all you know ticked off but no we we need them in their place of what god was calling them to be what they were called out to be for because i think men need that as well too God needs that. He needs us in unification as a husband and wife to worship him as he intended us to worship him. And I I don't think it's just a man issue where it's like men need to step up. Yes, they do. They, they need to grow a pair and they need to be men and they need to be more active and they need to be more of the head of the household and they need to have this calling um, that the Lord set upon them and for them to move forward within that calling. But at the same time, they need their help me. They need their helper. They need a woman. They need an actual woman. And I'm not just saying that in... <laughs> to be gender specific, I, I'm saying that as in, they actually need the woman to be the woman and be a good wife and, uh, you know, be at his side and be everything that she has been called to be by the Lord. <laughs> and I think once we do that, we'll see even a more strong turning from what the world is today, uh, especially to that of the destroyer and how um, Moloch is just destroying everything left and right within this, within the Lord's world, I guess. I was going to say this worldly system. He doesn't want to destroy that. He wants to build it up. So everything he's destroying that's in relation to God is probably the best way I should say that. And they hate children. They hate children. They do not want to see children in this coming to this world they do not want to see them uh coming to christ um and if they kill them young which is funny because they'll go to the lord anyways i mean uh if you're below the age of accountability and you die you, you the lord takes you uh, that that has been confirmed by many prophets the question of our babies in hell is just a ridiculous question because it's below the age of accountability even even at a young age jesus will come to them and say hey do you want me and when they reach death and they accept him and they go to heaven so <clears throat> when we need to have a turning of this abortion agenda because that's what feeds the demonic activity within this nation and I do understand that there's some controversy to that, you know, like, well, what about the health of the mother? Well, what if the woman's raped? Well, I mean, those are good topics. The problem with it is, is that it's, it's so low, like the actual percentages of people who specify that they were raped or by medical purposes, doctors saying this is going to cause severe detrimental health problems or death to the mother or the child. For the women who are reported as raped, it's about 
oh, I'm sorry, it's about 4%. And to the ones who have health issues, it's 3%. Now, the aggregate of that is 3.5%. And I know people say, no, it's actually 7% because it's two different things. Yes, I understand that, but you need to have an aggregate because not all women who are raped uh, aren't in need of any sort of health issues and not all women who have health issues you know weren't raped so there's there's this there's this mixing together of these two scenarios because they're not mutually exclusive from one another um so when you do that you need to take an aggregate which is 3.5 percent so <clears throat> to all these people out there who are saying well, what about the health of the mother what about you know uh, questions of incest or rape and stuff like that. Well, that's a 96.5 decline in abortion. So me personally, I would prefer abortion be zero, but I'll take a 96 to almost 97% reduction in abortion any day of the week and twice on Sunday. So for those of you who are bringing that up, I'm in agreement with you. The question is, are you in agreement with what you say? Because that's going to be the reduction, at least in this nation. I don't know about worldly, but those are the percentages that I got from this nation alone. And we would have almost, oh, I mean, yeah, over a 95% drop in abortions because of that. So yeah, uh, I'm, I'm t I, I believe that there is a discussion to be said there for the health of the mother and for rape people. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally with you on that. Let's discuss that. Because if you narrowed it down to just those situations, then uh, I'll, I'll take that. I mean, I'd rather have it zero, but I'll take that drop any day. Uh, will you take that drop is the question. So, And if you don't, then stop bringing it up. Stop bringing up the health of the mother and stop bringing up rape issues if we agree with you on those issues. But then you're like, well, no, no, hold on a second. No, you're the one that brought it up. So... You know, if, if you're not going to follow through with that, then stop using it as your excuse for abortion. So and I think once we totally start giving way to this question of uh, Moloch worship, because it is, it's just it's it's the burning of, you know, the, the slaughtering of innocent children. So <clears throat> we do that. We make sure that they lose their power. They lose their power in that process. So. I hope that this kind of gave you an idea of the three that has been going around for millennia now and how they do their stuff. And even in the days of Elijah, they tried to do it and they're doing it again today. It's like we, we seem to not learn from history. So, but I think once we put that into perspective and see how the world works and see how we can overcome it and how we lean into the Lord and how we pray for it, um, we can, we can overcome this and Again, I'm sorry if I'm late on this. Uh, I was a few days behind because it's it's getting to the point that I am so absolutely overwhelmed with stuff to do. I'm like, if the Lord added 12 extra hours to the day, I still wouldn't be able to get anything done. It's like I'm spread so absolutely thin and it's getting harder and harder for me to put out these videos because there's so many things going on on the weekends. I just, I don't even have time for it. It's been nuts. So... But what we'll do is, uh, I'm doing this at the end instead of at the beginning, forgive me for those of you who wanted to partake in it, because I just jumped right in. Um, I'm a bit out of it, I didn't get much sleep last night, probably like two hours or something, so so we'll do communion now at the end instead of at the beginning. So. And I know I didn't pray either, so I'll do that now at the end. <laughs> so, Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together, and I hope that some of them have understood the process of the enemy and how he works in today's age as well as in the past of bringing in this ball worship, the, the bull market, the Babylonian system, and how it questions God and our way of life. And, and if not that, uh, just have everything into this hedonistic lifestyle of, you know, just do what you want, take what you want drink what you want to do drugs have as much sex as you want because tomorrow you're going to die and brings in the enchantress of sexual sin without any repercussions without any compromise to it without the understanding that it is sin and because of that there's no hold back 
to the repercussions which come from sex, which is children. And so you're just going to kill them off because they're not even alive to these people. They're just pieces of matter, clumps of cells, as opposed to an actual human being, which comes from the Lord. And they're getting smited out by the hundreds of thousands, if not millions daily across the world. And I pray that people come to the realization of this and how corrupt and evil the system is and that they turn their faces to God, to God and confess their sins and lean into him and become stronger in him during these days because it's only going to get darker before it gets better to expose more and more and more of this worldly system and to open their eyes to the sins that even they have, let alone their government and political figures and judicial systems. Lord, just give them peace of mind who are in this understanding today that they can push through and have the patience to lean into you during this time so that people may wake up and to pray for them and to pray for our enemies as well. Even Hamas, those ones who have committed the atrocities over in Israel, to pray for them that they come into your fold and be your children because you are love and we can't look on this with vengeance. Vengeance is yours and we need to just pray for everyone during this time and to hopefully open our eyes. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes, Mike Thompson, the person that I was mentioning, I'm going to put him in the link. If you want to search him out and see if you could find, the, because he goes into the three, but he calls them something different. Like he said, uh, it, it's not based so much on them, but on us and our how we act in accordance to the three, to Ball, to the Enchantress and to the destroyer you know he's like and the first we get is the screamers you know and it's like I, honestly i can't even remember if the first one is the screamers but you know like the protesters like antifa and blm and the ones that are raging in the streets and stuff like that um but he goes into detail on that from a human perspective and how they acted out in accordance to the different the the different trinity and it's it's pretty good and he spoke on it in elijah streams but i'm going to link up his own personal website so maybe you can find it there as well I couldn't search for it in time, but I highly recommend it. And for my book recommendation, I recommend 23 Minutes in Hell by Bill Weiss. And I, I have the book. I also have his video on it, which is pretty good. Um, the thing is, I couldn't find it, and I'm fairly certain I may have borrowed it to somebody and just not have gotten it back. So at least I, if I remember correctly, that's what it was, but it is a good book. It's about him going to hell for like 23 minutes and getting a vision of it and pretty vivid. It, it explains a lot there. Um, I would highly recommend that. Or if you want, what I'll do is I'll just link up his video where he gets kind of a rough draft of it. You can watch the video and I'll put in the book link as well too. So if you want to order his book, if you're you know, if you're intrigued by the video he gave and want to read more in depth of it into the book, I highly recommend both. In fact, I think the book comes with a DVD in the back that gives another lecture. He, you know, he gives another lecture of, of the same thing that I'll show you, but I, I think it's uh, at a different church and stuff and he goes in a little bit more detail on it. So um, yeah, the book comes with a DVD as well that you can watch. So it's, it's, it's worth it. It's uh, yeah. It's pretty, pretty interesting and shows quite a bit of just what goes on there. Um, so uh, that is it. And it seems we kind of stretched out a little bit longer than I anticipated. I thought this was going to be a really short video and it turned out to be kind of average, about 40, 45 minutes or so. So good. I'm glad that I was able to stretch it out a bit. And again, sorry if I seem to be all over the place. I'm was uh, a little bit lack of sleep had some bad indigestion last night so I'm just gonna you know maybe try and get a little bit more rest in today after I mix this up oh and it's my brother's birthday today so happy birthday to my brother Eric um, he's how old am I he's 47 yes he's 47 and I have his birthday gifts here which I haven't mailed out because I'm an idiot so I'm going to see if I should just mail that to him or if he's going to come out to visit here sometime and I can just hand it to him. So, yay. Uh, I will catch you next week when we talk about the days of Noah, which I'm, I'm in this. I'm sort of indecisive if we're entering into those days right now or if it's tied into the real, you know, end days, tribulation, the rapture and stuff like that, which is happening at, at a farther date. But I think we're entering into these days where we're starting to see some of the stuff that's being implemented to bring in the days of Noah. And we're catching a lot of that with AI 
um, with just the different mixing of these humanoid creatures that people are trying to do across the planet. It's getting, it's getting to the point that they're, they're trying to do something you could tell. And, uh, I think as Jesus said, so in the days of Noah, the, the end of man will be. And I, I think, I think we're seeing the starting points of that. We're, we're definitely in the days of Elijah. And I think because of the days of Elijah, we'll be entering into the days of Joel, which doesn't sound like a fun time. And I should, almost probably make a video on that but i'll probably tie it in with the noah because there's not too much to explain with noah um so it, it may actually it may work that way maybe i'll just do a two for one special even though it says days of noah on the next episode I'll, I'll do days of joel with that and sort of mix all three of these times together which seem to be melding in into this giant ball of just chaos and uh but a lot of good things coming from it. And we need to be aware of that too. We need to focus on what God is trying to do and what he's trying to expose to build up this new kingdom age. And we need to be aware of that so that we don't fall prey to depression and weariness and exhaustion, which I've been in, but I've been trying to lean into the Lord a bit more and um, focus on what he wants me to do. So hopefully you will too. And I will catch you next week. <laughs> hopefully uh a friday or a saturday uh, it's gonna be my daughter lily's birthday next week like i said a lot of birthdays it's gonna be on the 18th but we're having a party on the 20th which means i probably won't make the video on friday maybe saturday so we'll see how it goes again it's been very busy but uh, i'll catch you then and may the lord bless you and keep you and do love you all and i'll talk to you then